Hi, and welcome to AIMTEC's video, Introduction to Power. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of power and start looking at AIMTEC's offering in the power supply market. To begin, we're going to look at voltage. Now, what is voltage? We're going to use the water tank analogy to go over a few basic principles of power and electricity. And so in this case, when we're talking about voltage, we're talking about the pressure that will be passing through the wire, or in this case, the hose. The more water that you have in the tank on top, the more pressure you'll have. Moving on to amperage, this will be represented by the amount of current that is passing through the hose. So a thicker hose or a larger hose will have more current passing through it than a smaller hose. Finally, the resistance, which is measured in ohms, can be represented by the width of the hose. The greater the width, the smaller the resistance, and the smaller the width, the more resistance that you get. And when you increase resistance, you decrease the amount of current that can pass through the hose, just like we saw in the previous example looking at the diameter of the hose and the amount of current that can flow through it. Now putting these three basic terms together, we get what we call Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law connects voltage, current, and resistance together in the following equation. So if we use 1 volt, 1 amp, and 1 ohm for all three units, we'll have 1 volt is equal to 1 amp times 1 ohm. So if you increase the resistance by 2, you'll need to decrease your amperage or your current by 2 to then have the same 1 volt that you had initially. Looking at the diagram, where we see R, that is the symbol for resistance in an electrical circuit. Uh, where we see V here, you see a longer horizontal line and a shorter horizontal line. This is the symbol of your power source, and then you see the plus side. And by convention, electricity flows from plus to minus. So the direction of the arrow here represents the direction of the current flowing through your circuit. And this is depicted by I, as we've seen earlier before. Now moving on to a basic concept of circuits, you can either have an open circuit or a closed circuit. A closed circuit is a circuit that will allow electricity to pass through it, and an open circuit will break the flow of electricity. So if you're powering a light bulb, if you open the circuit, obviously the electricity won't be able to flow through, and your light bulb will not be turned on. And a very easy way to conceptualize an open and closed circuit is a light switch. The switch is what will either open or close the circuit. Next, we'll be moving on to power, or which is measured in watts. Power is a function of current and voltage. So again, if we look at one watt equals one amp times one volt, if we increase amperage by two, we'll have to decrease the voltage by two. And the wattage, or the power, is the rate of energy transfer. So the greater the power, the more energy is transferred. So the first type of current that we're going to look at is alternating current. This type of current is one that periodically reverses directions. You can conceptualize this by thinking of water moving back and forth in a basin. Where you get this AC current, or this alternating current, is from the wall outlet. So anything you plug into the wall will be directly hooked up to alternating current. But this type of current isn't practical for powering any devices. Now looking at the diagram, we have alternating current on the left, which is depicted as a sinusoidal wave, and direct current, which is depicted as a simple straight line that does not vary. And this direct current is much more useful for powering components. So direct current is a current that flows in one direction, so unlike the AC that varies from back and forth, this one flows in one simple direction, and it usually comes from a battery or any alternate power source. And Again, most components require DC current to function. Now this is where AIMTEC comes in. We have AC-DC converters, or AC to DC converters, and what happens is AC comes in, so let's say you plug in your power into the wall outlet, it goes through AIMTEC's AC-DC converter, and what you get on the output is direct current. And now we can use this direct current to either power components directly, or we may need to transform this direct current to higher voltages or lower voltages depending on the components that it's powering. In this case, this is an example of a diagram that takes in AC current right away 
and converts it to different voltages depending on the different chips or different components that are in the circuit. So right here we have an LED so we're going to be using an AC DC LED driver AMTIC has multiple LED drivers in this example here we have one from 50 watts all the way up to 250 watts depending on the power requirements of the LED itself so this takes AC in and then it will power the LED the next thing that we have here are AC to DC converters that will convert the AC coming in from the wall or any other power source that supplies AC and will be converting it to direct current and it will be powering things like the motion sensor and the MCU or the antenna that we have here and depending on the power requirements of each of these components we may need to use an output of 3 volts direct current or an output of 5 volts direct current. Now here we have an example of how AIMTEC DC to DC converters are used. So right here we have an AC to DC converter, the AMEM5, that is converting the, the, the current from AC to DC with an output of 3 volts, depicted by the 3.3 that we see here. And then this gets received by the AM1LS or AM2LS, depending on the power requirements of the system, which is a DC-DC converter. Now what this converter does, it will take in an input voltage here of between 2.97 and 3.63, also 3 volts, and will output something between, or output either plus or negative 5 volts. In this case, we'll just omit the negative 5 for simplicity. Let's just say that it outputted 5 volts. That means that all these components within the circuit require 5 volts. Typical DC to DC converter uses are the following, but obviously there are many more. These are just to illustrate basic applications of it. In the first case, we have a 24 volt battery from a truck that needs to be stepped down to 12 volts to operate a car radio. Next, we have 12 volts coming in from a car battery that must be stepped down to 3 volts for a personal CD player. After that, we could have a 5 volt coming in that needs to be stepped down to 2 or 3 volts for a CPU. And finally, we can have 12 volts that need to be stepped up to plus or minus 40 volts to run a hi-fi amplifier. And obviously, when we perform these conversions from 12 to 3 volts, we want to have the highest possible efficiency because the lower the efficiency, I mean, A, the more power we lose, and B, the more heat gets dissipated. Thank you for watching Aimtech's first introduction to power tutorial. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one.